hello. It's good to see you. Today I thought we would do a little bit of a rambling. I've run into another saga, I think. If you've been following just some of the stuff that's gone on since I bought this house three years ago, it seems like everything here it turns into this long, winding road of unnecessary problems. If you, I don't know if you listened to the whole saga about the door. The uh, I had the board replaced in the threshold, which led to a whole series of problems. <laughs> Something that should have been very simple turned into a whole big mess where I ended up having to replace my entire storm door. Oh my gosh, it's, there was that. And then we had the refrigerator deal. And now I think I have another issue. Oh, I wanted to show you my hair. My real life Trish did my hair for me. <laughs> Lynette did not do my nails, but yeah, I, I can never, I can never get my hair to look the way she does. She always does such a beautiful job when, when she fixes my hair. So I just wanted to show you that because it's going to get messed up in the morning because I have to get out and do some yard work. And, um, I've been trying to get something straightened out with my, uh, with my lawn, my grass, hypothetically. <laughs> but first I wanted to tell you about some soap. This has been, um, this has been another thing that I've been trying to, uh, deal with. I have this soap here. I love this stuff so much. I was able to find it at Walmart up until the pandemic. And then, you know, you couldn't find hand soap anywhere. And this was one of the ones I could not find. I love this stuff so much. It's honeysuckle jasmine. It has a rich bouquet of honeysuckle and jasmine. And it's a foaming hand soap. So it starts out as a liquid, comes up through the little pump here, and it comes out as a foam. I love the way it smells. I use it every day. I keep this in the bathroom downstairs. It smells so good and it's really cheap too. It's only $1.98 for this 12 ounce bottle and a bottle this size will last quite a while. It'll last a couple of months at least. Um, and it's wonderful. It's made in Canada and you don't have to use a lot. It's distributed by Apollo Health and Beauty Care. This stuff is wonderful. They had several different scents, but this was my favorite. Well, I was looking on the Walmart app earlier and one of the nearby Walmarts, it said that they had some of these, but they were on clearance for 25 cents each. And the app said they had five of them. But if you've ever dealt with their app, you know that sometimes the, the counts are not accurate. But I thought I'm going to run up there anyway, because I'm running low and I wanted to get some more because I love this stuff so much. It smells so good. I just cannot tell you how good this stuff smells. Um, so I went up there. They didn't have any, of course. And that's when I found out the bad news. They're not going to sell it anymore. And I've never seen this stuff at any other store. Um, so I'm really sad. This stuff is awesome. But it's honeysuckle jasmine. Oh, it's so lovely. It is so lovely. I love anything honeysuckle scented. It's just awesome. So, but I, I wanted to get some soap anyway because, um, in the bathroom here at my, my bathroom upstairs, I was running low. Here's what I have in my bathroom up here. I had this um, citrus and sage scented hand soap. I found this at Christmas tree shops a while ago. It was only $2 for this big thing of it. And it had an M on it. That's why I got it. It's citrus and sage scented, but it smells like absolutely nothing. <laughs> But I thought, well, I really like the bottle. So what if I could find some refill soap? Well, the app said they didn't have any refill soap, but they totally did. They had a buttload of it. So look at this. I got a jug of liquid hand soap. It's clear, equate, unflavored hand soap. It's fish flavored. If you remember my Dollar Tree videos where we used to do shelf organizations. I can't do those right now for two reasons. Uh, coronavirus, coronavirus is one reason, and the other one is, is not coronavirus. Um, it's another reason that I can't. There's a reason I'm not making videos in stores other than coronavirus. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fish flavored. It's just clear, 
unscented soap. This was only $4 for this 56 ounce jug of soap. So I can refill this thing a ton of times. So that's awesome. So I'm glad I didn't go buy the app for the refill. They also had this. This is another foaming hand soap. I've never tried it, but it's from Method. It's Sea Minerals, naturally derived foaming hand wash. And it smells really nice. I kind of just opened it and sniffed it a little bit. It smells really good. It's a beautiful blue color. So I thought, well, you know, when I run out of my honeysuckle jasmine, maybe I can use something else. So I thought I would give this a try. They had a bunch of this. It's hit and miss. You know, they're, they're out of random things. Um, Glenda the Good Witch, if you know who that is, uh, my current ex-husband, uh, had asked me, he said, you know, if you're in the store and you see any daily shower cleaner, can you get some for me? Because uh, you can't find bath and shower cleaner of really any type around here. It's empty everywhere. And dishwashing liquid, you can't find that either. That's sort of starting to come back. But I love the Dawn pomegranate uh, dishwashing liquid. Good luck finding it. You can find everything but the pomegranate, which is the one that I love and I use every day. Fortunately, I did find some recently and I bought two bottles of it. But I thought, okay, well, I'll get this and we'll use that in the bathroom. But then, actually, something actually worked out well. I got home and I was getting ready to put some stuff up and I looked in the cabinet in the downstairs bathroom and look what I found in there. I had a whole extra bottle of this stuff. I am so glad I bought this. And then I remembered the last time I bought it, I bought two bottles of it. And I wasn't even thinking that I wouldn't be able to get it. I just decided to go ahead and get two for no apparent reason. But I'm really glad I did because now I can't get it anymore. I hate that it's on clearance and they're doing away with it. Every time I find something I like that happens. Well, not every time, but... If there's a product I really like, they either stop making it or they stop selling it around here. But, uh, so I was really happy to find this. So, when this runs out, at least I have one more bottle to go. And if I can't find any more, then, then I'll go to the, uh, what is this stuff? Method Sea Minerals. You know, it won't be the end of the world. It's definitely not a huge problem in the grand scheme of things. It's just annoying. So I, I, I would just I just got back from Walmart. I wanted to share my, my soap my soap opera here. Okay. Now when I bought this house three years ago, the yard looked awful. Um, and everyone else's lawn around here is, is beautiful, except for uh, Buffalo Bill over here. He pays this company to come mow his yard. It is the craziest thing I've ever seen. They are the worst landscape people I've ever seen. Theoretically, they come over here and they, they're here and gone in about 20 minutes. They mow the front yard, the side yard, the backyard with one of those big zero turn radius mowers. And they kind of slap dash the weed eater here and there. And there's this big stick. It almost looks like a corn stalk that has been in his yard now for going on three months. Every time they come to mow, and they come about once a week or so, when they mow, the stick somehow gets pitched out in the middle of the yard and they'll mow around it. And then they'll just, they'll get off the mower, pick it up, fling it back up in his shrubs. They won't throw it away. They don't dispose of it. They don't bag the clippings. They leave the clippings just scattered everywhere. Um, they usually, a lot of times the clippings will get blown over into my yard. But see, I was out there mowing while they were out there last time. And I gave them a dirty look like they were blowing that. They had the leaf blower and they were blowing them over into my yard. And I gave them a dirty look and he came and blew them back. Back up into Buffalo Bill's yard. Normally they just blow them on over into my yard in my driveway. They are so sorry. They are the sorriest people I've ever seen. And when they trim his shrubs, it it looks like Freddy Krueger did it. I mean, it's awful. They practically go out there with a chainsaw and a blindfold. I mean, it's just the... I can do better myself, and I suck at trimming hedges. I mean, it's just like... 
it's like they just went out there with some machetes and after a few beers and just started hacking at those poor shrubs. I hope he's not paying them much. I, I tell you, it's almost like the only, I got to thinking about it while I'm watching them work and I'm just amazed at how terrible they are. I got to thinking either they got some dirt on him or he owes them big time for something and has to keep them on to keep their mouth shut or something like otherwise why would you have these people do in your yard i don't even know what company it was there's no sign on their truck or anything it's just two dudes in a truck with a trailer it's not the dudes in trucks it's just lazy landscaping dudes in a different truck with a trailer with a mower in it anyway that has absolutely nothing to do with my yard. I'm just saying, when you look up and down my street, most people have beautiful lawns. And they have, you know, there are lawn care companies that will come and treat your lawn. They'll do the seeding and the aeration and, you know, all this stuff. So basically, all you have to do is mow it and weed eat it or pay somebody to do that or whatever. When I bought this house, now, you have to know that the guy that lived here before me was just one of the most unconcerned people. There were one of them. He everything here was a mess. The showers didn't drain properly. None of the toilets worked right. There were just all these little things that were wrong. And he didn't care about his yard. Obviously, the grass was knee high. What grass there was, it was mostly dandelions and clover and weeds, and it looked terrible. It looked awful. And he didn't even mow it. I had to pay somebody to come mow it before I moved in because I was afraid the city was going to find me or something. So I wanted it to look nice. You know, I don't want the neighbors to go, ooh, you know, I was, <laughs> I, who's moved in over there? You know, she hasn't fixed the yard. It makes the rest of the neighborhood look bad. And I like a nice lawn. Um, I, I owned a house before Glenda the Good Witch and I got married. And that house was actually worse. When I bought that house, there was no grass in the yard. It was just red clay and clover. And that was it. And that's one of the things about living around here is that there's lots of that red, sticky red clay. There's not a whole lot of soil. I mean, there's soil, but you also have that red clay. And nothing wants to grow in that red clay except for just weeds. So I thought, okay, well, I'll contact a lawn care company to come out here and see what they can do about it and then because I'll mow it and weed eat it I'll keep it up but at the other house I had I tried to do it myself I tried to plant grass and you know make it look good and I put a lot of work into it oh hours and hours I put into it and money and work and blood sweat and tears and I had it looking better but you know, I add up all the money I spent trying to get it to look nice and all of the time I put into it, I thought I would have been better off just paying somebody to come out here and do this and it would have looked better and ultimately it probably would have been cheaper. So um, I decided when I bought this place that I would do that. I, I've, I'd never contacted a lawn care company before. Um, there's a, a ton of them around here. There are millions, well not millions, but a lot of lawn care companies around here. And they have clever names, you know. And uh, we're not going to use their names. We're going to give them other names, hypothetically. And um, so I contacted this company. We'll call them Kiss My Grass. So I called Kiss My Grass. I said, hey, um, you know, I just bought this house. Do you think you could come out and give me an estimate to make it, you know, make the lawn look better? Oh, sure. So they came out and, you know, I said, I have weeds, I have bare spots, you know, it's mostly weeds at this point and the grass, I don't even know what kind of grass it is. I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. So they said, oh yeah, yeah, totally. We can, we can do it. And I paid annually uh, and they would do this, the aeration, everything. Um, and I think for, for the year it was like $600. It was like $50 a month and um, the aeration alone if for the size of my lawn to get it aerated just to get it aerated would have been like two hundred and some dollars and then they that would you know they were gonna plant the grass you know because they have to kill off all the weeds plant the grass 
do soul treatments and pH and I don't I don't understand all this soul science but kiss my grass was going to do that for me I said wonderful so they came out and they did get it to look better but um, I worked with them for three years let's see 20 we moved here in 2017 2018 2019 2020 and my contract ran out with them back in I want to say May and normally they would call me to see if I wanted to renew because I asked them I said please don't you know when my contract runs out don't do anything until you call me and then we will see if we want to proceed for another year I don't want you to come out and do treatments that I haven't paid for and they always called me well, the whole time they've been doing my yard, I have continuously had problems with weeds. I have multiple types of weeds. I don't even know what they're called. I did learn from another company just recently that I have what's called button weeds in the backyard. Whatever button weeds are, I hate them because they're all over my backyard. They never got rid of the button weeds. The big bare areas are still there. They're even larger now. They never did anything about those. My side yard over here is full of weeds and bare spots. There's not much grass over there at all. And I have weeds in my front yard everywhere. Um, so I, I had already decided I wasn't happy with Kiss My Grass. I was going to tell Kiss My Grass to kiss, kiss my grits because we weren't going to work together anymore because they've had three years to fix this stuff they had they've had plenty of time to get rid of the weeds and deal with the bare spots and they told me they would they did not the the weeds and everything have continued to be a problem so another thing I didn't like was that okay there are multiple types of grass planted in my yard there's three or four types of grass in the front and at least three types in the back and they're totally different. I mow once a week, so I, I, I have an intimate knowledge. Of, I see this grass a lot. <laughs> I'm looking at it every week, and um, I don't know what, I didn't know what types of grass they were, but I hate the way my yard looks in the wintertime. Like it all dies off and just turns brown, and it looks like crap all winter. And the bad thing too is that when all the grass dies, you can really see the weeds because the weeds remain beautiful and green. You can see the clover and the dandelions and the button weeds. They never turn brown. They stay green all year. So they really stand out in the winter time. Well, last January, let's see, this was right after Christmas. I went over to Glenda the Good Witch's house and um, his yard was beautiful. It, was, it looked like this lush green carpet. It was dark green in the middle of January. I said, what in the world? How does your yard look like this? I said, my yard looks like a Brillo pad. How does your yard look like this? And he said, oh, I use uh, a different company. I use uh, Weed Men. You know, the, that's not the name of the company. The Weed Men take care of my yard. I said, oh, I may have to give them a call. And it was around that time that I decided not to renew with Kiss My Grass. I thought, I'm going to get the weed men to take over when my year with Kiss My Grass runs out. So I was feeling pretty good about that. So I knew my year was going to run out in the spring. And I figured they would call before they did anything. Well, they did not. Um, back in early June they came out here and I happened to be home when they came out this was kiss my grass now I can tell you they came out here to put out fertilizer that guy literally he got out of the truck he had like a five gallon bucket of granular fertilizer he literally just went sling sling he didn't put any in the backyard and set the bucket down, did something, put it back in the truck, and left. He was gone in less than five minutes. He just, that was literally all he did. And they were going to charge me $75 for that, um, which I found out later because I got a bill for it. And um, 
Well, the thing was, apparently, when he set that bucket down, and I did not know this until a couple days later, I didn't see it, but apparently he managed to dump some of that granular fertilizer in an area. It was right near my mailbox. It was an area, I mean, it was a big area. He burnt up. Oh, it was bigger than that because there were two spots. There was one here and there was another one over here where he just completely burnt my yard. He killed the grass by dumping fertilizer there. And I took a picture of it and I sent it to kiss my grass and I said, look at my yard. Look at this. Look what happened to my grass because a few days later it started to die. And you could really tell that something was wrong with it. And they called me, Kiss My Grass called me, and they said, well, how do you know we did that? Can you prove that we caused that? I said, it's granular fertilizer. One of your people came out here just the other day to put out fertilizer, and so I think it's, it's it must be one heck of a coincidence that right after that, granular fertilizer was left on my yard, and it burned up my grass. And she said, well, I just, I mean, we don't have any way of knowing that it was our fault. I said, yeah, probably what happened was, you know, somebody was out walking their dog, you know, toting a bag of fertilizer like you do. And then they just accidentally spilled some in my yard when they were walking by. That's probably what happened. And she said, well, you know, I, I understand that you're not happy. So uh, we will um, offer to come back out and treat your yard for free. I said, no, thank you. I don't want you to do anything else to my yard. I'm not happy with your service and I don't want you to do anything else here. I don't want to renew with you. I'm going to get another company to take care of my lawn from here on out. And uh, she said, yes, ma'am, I understand. Thank you very much. And so I thought we were done. Well, a couple days later, I got a bill in the mail for $75 for the fertilizer treatment. <laughs> So, I tried to call. I left a voicemail. Nobody called me back. And then, I sent them an email because nobody called. And they, they responded to the email and said, Well, are you saying you want to cancel your service? And I, I responded and said, Yes, I already discussed this with y'all that I wanted to cancel. And then the person responded and said, well, I have no record of you calling us. And if you want to cancel, you have to call and speak to someone directly. We cannot cancel by email. Okay. So I called them again. And of course they run through, they have these scripts for situations like this to try to keep you as a customer. They will offer you all kinds of incentives and discounts, and this and that and the other. And I said, well, I haven't been happy with your service for quite a while. I have problems that have continued ever since I hired you three years ago that you have not addressed. And the lady goes, well, did you ever tell the techs about these problems? I said, well, usually when they come, I'm not here, so I can't talk to them. And isn't it kind of their job to notice these things? I mean, isn't that part of what I'm paying you to do? You're, you're only, you have, you only have one job. Your job is to make my yard look like not crap. It's supposed to look less crappy. I know every time they come out here, they have to see those weeds. They come out every time. They see the weeds. They see the bare spots. It is not my job to tell them how to do their job. So no, I have not talked to them, mainly because I'm almost never here when they come out. And if I am here, they are here and gone so fast, I don't even know they were they were here. The only reason I knew that one guy was here putting out fertilizer was because I heard him shut the door of his little truck van thing they drive. It's like a van, but it's squished. It's like a tiny van. I don't know what they are. They're little. I had to go around and around and around with this lady. And so she finally said, well, are you just, are you determined? Are you bound and determined to cancel? I said, yes, ma'am, I want to cancel. I don't want anything else from y'all. I do not want you to come out. I don't care if it's free. I don't want you doing anything else to my yard. You've done enough. I don't want you coming anymore. I'm hiring someone else. Okay, well, I understand that. Two days later, I get another bill in the mail, $75 for the service they did. 
and uh, so I had to call them again and tell them, you know, I wasn't happy with the service you did. And they do have a money back guarantee. If they do a service and you're not happy with it, you can get your money back. I've never done that. I said the guy came out, he slung a couple of handfuls of fertilizer in the front yard. He didn't do anything in the backyard. And then he burned up a section of my front yard with fertilizer. I'm not paying $75 for that. I'm just not. So they said they were going to credit my account and zero it out. I've not gotten anything else from them. So I'm hoping that Kiss My Grass is history. I will never deal with them ever again. Um, all right. So I decided, and I was feeling really good. I was feeling positive. I was like, yay. So I'm going to call, I'm going to call um, the weed men that do Glenda the Good Witch's yard because his yard is beautiful. It looks good year round. It's gorgeous. Oh, I wish my yard looked that good. And uh, because I asked him, I said, are you doing something here beyond what they're doing? He said, no, I just mow it and weed eat it. They do everything else. And he's paying the same or maybe even a little less than what I'm paying. And it's square footage wise, we have about the same amount of grass to mow. It's about the same area. Um, so I called the weed men. And uh, a guy came out and they brought, you know, their their stuff. Said, Kiss my grass didn't give me anything like this. They didn't give me anything. It was all done over the phone. I got nothing from them. Um, now they have different programs. They have the biologically enhanced turf program, the fungicide program, the aeration and seeding program, insecticide program, and the tree and shrub program. So I talked to the guy that came out and he told me that my grass, and the grass in my front yard is a combination of three different types of grass. I didn't know. He said there's Bermuda grass, tall fescue, and there was a third one and I can't remember what it was. It was something goofy I've never heard of before. Um, and he said, I don't even know why they'd plant that. He said, it was some kind of strange. And the funny thing is, Whatever this grass is, it's nothing like the other two. The other two kind of look the same. Well, I mean, you know, when you mow it. The other grass, it grows really tall, and it's a bright green. It's like neon green, and it's a broadleaf, funky-looking grass. It looks nothing like the other two, and it sticks out like a sore thumb. And it's just dotted here and there in my front yard. There's none of it in the back. But for some reason, it's all over my front yard. And when it grows, it grows really fast and really tall, and it sticks up like rabbit ears out of the out of the grass. I said, can we get rid of whatever that is? Can we do something about it? So he said the best thing to do would be to mix in some rye grass, because rye grass doesn't turn brown in the winter like that Bermuda grass. Bermuda grass, according to this dude, I'm just telling you what he told me, I don't know diddly squat about grass. So if I'm telling you something wrong, you can get mad at the weed man because I don't know anything about it. He said that Bermuda grass is what they use on golf courses. And you know, in the wintertime, it just turns that beige color. And that, that's what my yard does. Every winter, it looks, it looks like crap. It just looks awful. So um, he said what we can do is mix in some rye grass and that will keep the color greener. He said, you know, this winter, we may not be able to do a lot before this winter. But by next winter, we can have it looking really good. I said, that would be wonderful. And he looked in the backyard. In the backyard, I have Bermuda grass, um, Kentucky bluegrass. I thought that was music. Apparently, it's a good extra. And uh, tall fescue. There's none of that goofy neon green grass back there. But back there, it's mostly... Um, Bermuda grass also, and so it looks like crap in the winter too. And he said, oh, you, he said, your back foot yard is full of buttonweed. I said, is that what that is? He said, yeah, you've got buttonweed everywhere back here. I said, I know, it's, it's all over the place back here. There's none of it in the front, but. So he said, yeah, well, the first thing we'll do is deal with all these weeds. He said, oh, your yard's probably gonna look worse before it looks better because we have to kill off all these weeds and that goofy grass, whatever it was in the front kill all that off. Now, he said, okay, I said, okay, now all, all these programs, what do I need out of here? Now, I did tell him I'm not interested in the insecticide program 
Don't care about that. I don't care about the tree and shrub program. I have shrubs around the front that were here when I bought this place, and quite frankly, I don't like any of those shrubs. If they all died, I wouldn't care. I'd dig them up and put something else there. I said, I'm not worried about the shrubs. I'm not, I'm not worried about any of my trees. I don't want that, that, applica that program. So he said, you know, you need the biologically enhanced turf program. That's seven applications throughout the year. Fungicide. Now I said, what about fungicide? Because see, Kiss My Grass told me I needed the fungicide program, which is a full annual program with five applications. He said, you don't need it. He said, that's a waste of money. He said, did they tell you you needed that? And honestly, I couldn't remember. I don't know if they told me I needed it or not, but I was paying for it every year. And that, uh, that's about $250 a year for fungicide, the fungicide program. He said, because you have, you don't have a lot of standing water. You don't, your grass is not in the shade at all. It's in full sun pretty much all day. I don't see any reason for you to pay for the fungicide program. You don't have any signs of any problems with any fungus in your yard. He said, you can pay for it if you want to, but it would be a waste of money. I said, well, I won't pay for it then. And the aeration and the seeding program is performed in the fall. So they come out and they, they do the overseeding and they come out and aerate everything. And, um, and it helps, you know, break up all the, the bound roots and whatnot and aerates everything and just makes it lovely so it grows lush and rampant. I said, I do want that. I want the aeration and the seeding and the turf program. And all that together, I'll see. That's actually going to be cheaper than when I was paying Kiss My Grass, but mainly because we're not doing the fungicide program. If I were doing that, it'd be about the same price. Okay, now this was about five weeks ago. Yeah, five, it was about five weeks ago that he came out here, four or five weeks ago. And he said, uh, he gave me some guy's name and said, this guy will be in touch with you. He's the one that's going to be doing your yard, your lawn service. He's going to be the only one. He's going to handle everything. And I told Glenda the Good Witch about it. And he said, oh, he's the one who does my yard because we don't live too far apart. So he said, he'll do a good job. He does my yard. So you're going to, you're going to be really happy. So I'm feeling really good. I'm thinking, this is awesome. I'm going to have my yard looking even better, get rid of the weeds. They said they'd take care of the bare spots and everything. All right, so I went on about my business and my life, and then I realized about a week and a half ago I hadn't heard from anybody from the weed men. No one, no one had called me. No one had said anything to me about anything. I haven't given them any money, so I wasn't too worried about it. Well, so I've been trying to call them. I've been trying to call them now for about 10 days every day or so I try to call and I can never get anybody on the phone I leave messages I ask them to call me back nobody calls me back and it's just my opinion but you know when you have a new customer if you have a business and you have a new customer it might be good to call them back you know especially if they haven't even decided for sure they're gonna work with you or not and you haven't gotten any money from them yet you might want to call them back. Just take five minutes and return their phone call, especially if they keep calling. So nobody called me back. So yesterday, this oh God, this was just yesterday. So yesterday, I'm waiting for my hair appointment. And I'm sitting there. And so I thought, well, I'm going to go on their website. And I'm going to, they have the little contact us option where you put your name and your email address in there and a little message. So I did that and I said, can you please call me? You know, somebody came out. I haven't heard anything from anybody. I've tried to call y'all. Nobody's called me back. Can somebody please call me back? Now, that's all I said. Now there were two options for the contact us and you had to check a box. You can either check a box as I'm requesting new service. You know, I want an estimate for new service or I just need you to contact me. I made sure to check just contact me because I didn't want anybody coming out to do an estimate and all that because I already have that. So um, nobody called, nobody did anything. 
and I was really, I'm, I'm really irritated at this point. I'm like, you know, they did a really good job on Glenda the Good Witch's yard, but I'm about at the point where I'm just going to start calling other companies and talking to somebody else. Um, so, oh, they didn't call. What they did was, while I was at work today, apparently they came by here while I was at work. I had no way of knowing they were coming here. They didn't tell me they were coming here. I had no reason to think they were coming here. So I wasn't here when they came by. Um, and apparently another guy came out. And this guy really got under my skin. He came out here and did the, the, another whole write-up and put it in a little folder like this and left it in a little baggie on my door, the handle on my storm door. So he went through this whole rigmarole again. And so he had his little card in the, in the thing. So I called him when I got home from work. And I said, uh, yeah, I see you came by my house. And he said, yeah, I, I figured you'd be at home. I said, why would you think I was at home? He said, well, I just thought you'd be there. I said, I was at work. You know, if you had called me, I would have told you I wasn't going to be there. He said, well, I really needed to speak with you. I said, well, then you really should call me. You have my phone number. He said, because he told me he got it from the uh, the website where I asked them to contact me. I said, you had my phone number and email address. You could have contacted me. And I would have told you don't go by there because I wasn't there. Because he was complaining because he had to come from out of town to do the estimate. And he was a little grouchy about it. I said, that's not my, that's not my problem. I didn't tell you to do that. I just wanted somebody to call me back. And he said, well, ma'am, you really should have said that in your message instead of saying you need a new service. And I said, I didn't say I needed a new service. I specifically checked the box that I only wanted you to contact me, that not that I need a new service or an estimate. And he said, well, that's not the information I have. And I said, well, that's what I did. He said, well, in the future, you just need to be more clear. And I said, in the future, I'll be contacting somebody else if we can't, you know, work this out. I said, don't worry about it. So he goes, okay, well, how do you feel about the estimate? You know, did you have a chance to look over it? Did you have any questions? I said, no. I said, I want the turf program and the aeration and seeding, just like I said before. And he said, are you going to do your own fungicide program? Do you know how to do that? It's not, it's not as simple as you may think. I said, I'm not going to do the fungicide program. There's no need to. I was told... Um, by the other guy that came out that it wasn't necessary and it would be a waste of money because I absolutely did not need it. And he said, well, I don't know who else you had come out, but obviously they didn't know what they were talking about because you clearly need the fungicide program. Your yard is in really bad shape. You desperately need that program. My yard is not in bad shape. It has weeds, but overall it doesn't look that bad. But I'm not as happy with it as I could be. So I said, oh, you're saying the other person doesn't know what they're talking about? He said, well, obviously. And I said, the other person also works for your company. And he, he said, I'm, I'm, you've lost me. I don't know what you're talking about. I said, the reason I wanted somebody to call me back was because some other guy from your company came out about four or five weeks ago and already did all this. I didn't need you to come out and do all this. I already have all this information. And he said, ma'am, I really wish you had told us that because we don't have your name in our files. We had no way of knowing that someone from our company had already come out to your house. And there's so much wrong with that statement. I don't know where to start, but I'm not, I'm not trying to be a Karen about this. People keep asking me to do a Karen role play. And now I'm paranoid that I'm a Karen. I just want somebody to get the damn weeds out of my yard. I'll pay them. I'll pay to get the weeds out of my yard and to fix the bare spots. I said, well, here's, he said, well, I need the name of the person who came out. Do you know the person's name? I said, hang on. And I went, I said, I got his card and it irritated me too. Another thing he was doing, every time he would ask me a question, I would start to answer it. And then he would just talk over me. Like he would ask a question and not even give me a chance to answer it. Because he said, I, I want the name of the other person that came out. And I was trying to explain to him that I had this information. And I'm trying to give him the name. And he just keeps talking over me. 
I had to practically yell at him to stop talking so I could give him the name because he just kept yammering. Like he was just really mad. And I said, no, here, here's the person's name. I had to say it three times before he heard me because he kept talking over me. So I was really not happy at this point. And he said, well, I don't know what the, I don't know what he told you, but that is incorrect. Your yard really needs fungicide, the fungicide program. And I said, but the other guy said, it's in full sun. There's no, there are no standing water issues. There's, he said, there's no, there's no signs of any fungus in my yard. And he said, oh, your yard is full of it. Your yard is so full of fungus. He said, I can't believe you have any grass at all. I think he's full of shit myself. I think he's just, I don't know if they get kickbacks for what, what programs you get. I'm kind of thinking they do. He said, oh, you got to get the fungicide program. You, you have to. I mean, that's just, you, you don't really have a choice. You're going to have to get that. And uh, I said, well, I, I just, I'm sorry. But the other guy said there was literally no need for it. and It would be a waste of money. So then he goes, well, I can't help you. I don't know what to tell you. I just feel like, you know, I've just wasted half a day coming out there. And I said, again, that's not my problem. I didn't tell you to come out here. So he said, well, you need to call the first person who came out. I said, this, I'm trying to get somebody to talk to me, anybody. I keep calling and calling and calling and nobody will answer me. Nobody will call me back. And he said, well, I'm not in the office, so that's not my fault. I said, apparently nobody's in the office, like, ever. And then, of course, you get, well, coronavirus. Like, that's the excuse for everything a company does now. If anything's delayed, it's coronavirus. So I said, well, be that as it may, I find it hard to believe that in a week and a half, nobody could call me back. So... I called the guy. I had to leave him a message. He didn't answer the phone. Nobody ever answers the phone. So at this point, honestly, even though Glenda the Good Witch's yard looks really good, I am tempted to just say, you know what? Don't worry about it. I don't want to do it myself because I, I don't want to put the work into it and the money to manage my lawn. I, I suck at that kind of stuff. I do not have a green thumb at all. I'm not good with plants. Um, I'm surprised I've kept two children alive as long as I have. I can't keep a potted plant alive to save my life. So, I don't know. I mean, even with their glossy, pretty pictures and stuff, I don't know. So, I've started looking into some other lawn care companies, and that's the thing. I mean, there are so many of them around here. There are tons of them that I bet would love to have my business and would not talk to me. That guy really made me mad today, talking to him on the phone. He really ticked me off. He was just, he was condescending. He was snippy. He was rude. It was like I was putting him out. I'm like, I didn't even ask you to come out here. I just wanted somebody to call me back because I wanted to find out what we were doing because no, they haven't come back out. I haven't heard anything from anybody. I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what treatment we have coming up next because it's about time to do something and they haven't done anything. So I, I don't know that I'm going to go with the weed men. I'll see if that guy calls me back. If I don't hear from him by end of business Monday, I'm just going to go with somebody else, I think. And we'll see if maybe they can make my yard less weedy. But I don't know. This may be the beginning of a saga. I hope not. It'd be really great. You know, if I could just pick up the phone and call a company and say, hey, can you manage my lawn? Yes. Yes, ma'am, we can. Here's how much it costs. Okay. Here's my credit card number. And here's my debit card number. Whatever. Okay. Thank you. We'll take care of it. Alrighty. Bye-bye. And then that's it. That's literally all that had to happen here because... You know, I already have the stuff. I already know what programs I want. And I don't think I'm going to go with that fungicide program. I figure if my yard starts looking like crap, we can try it then. But that fungicide program is $250 a year just for the fungicide program. And if I don't need it, I don't want to pay for it. I don't want to spend $250 on something I don't need. Mm. So anyway... 
that is about all I know. I know there are bigger problems in the world. It's just amazing how it seems like everything in this house that I've tried to do that should be very simple, like getting a, a board replaced in the threshold, just having the board replaced because it was old and starting to come apart, that should have been simple. Oh no, it involved like several days worth of work and then I had to replace the entire storm door because when they were taking it out, they basically tore it up. Um, the refrigerator. Oh, it's everything is like the Poseidon adventure around here. I don't know why. I know I'm not the only one who experiences that, but it's just, that's part of what is so frustrating about it because it's not hard. I'm not asking for anything difficult, but it always ends up being difficult regardless. So I guess we'll see what happens, but yeah, I'm going to give them until 5 o'clock Monday, and if I don't hear anything, I'm just not going to bother with them anymore. I'll just find someone else who is willing to actually, you know, call me back and work with me. Because I'm not hard to reach, you know, I'm, I'm not hard to reach. They just don't have time to mess with me, and obviously they don't need my business very much, so we won't worry about it. But anyway, that's that's about it. I'm, I'm feeling good. I, it feels good to vent. I feel better now. Thank you. There's not been, well, there have been a few things that have happened in the neighborhood. Boots is back, theoretically. And Joe is building something back there. I don't know what it is. Because theoretically, last week, they had the fence. Okay, there's a fence between my backyard and their backyard. They had that fence taken out, and they put up like a privacy fence, so I don't really know what's going on back there. Like, I'd have to get up on my tippy toes and look over it, and I don't want to do that, because that's just weird. Um, so I don't know, but there's been a lot of hammering and sawing going on over there, so I don't really know what they're doing. It could be anything, knowing them. But Boots is back, the little dog. But the, the, the hair extensions on the tail and the head are gone. It looks more like an actual dog now, so I, I don't know that Boots is on Instagram anymore. I'm not really sure. Maybe Boots just went back to a normal, quiet life. Maybe the Instagram fame didn't work out the way they wanted it to. I don't really know. I don't, I don't talk to them much, but anyway, I can never get my hair to look like this. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's, she's, she's brilliant. She's an awesome hairstylist. Beautiful. But anyway, that is everything that I had to tell you. Hopefully we'll get someone to take care of my yard. It looks okay for now, I guess. The burnt area has about healed itself, like it's grown back. You know, it's filled back in. You can still kind of see where it was burnt, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was. If you had seen it a few weeks ago, it was awful. It looked like somebody lit it on fire. It looked like somebody had a campfire out there. But, uh, yeah, that's everything. But thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you have a great day. And I'll see you again soon.